Hi students, welcome to the Dr. Bhatia Medical Coaching Institute and eGurukul. I am Dr. Ramya Sri, I teach Obstetrics and Gynecology. How is your preparation going on? I hope it is going on in a wonderful pace. I do understand this is the time where all of you will feel like you know, I don't know how is it going on, I feel I forget everything after I read. The, but that is pretty normal and uh, it is the same thing which happens to everyone. So don't worry about that. The only important thing is the consistency. So keep on going, keep on going, keep on reading. Don't give up at any point of time or don't stop at any point of time. Even if you stop, pick it up back. And yes, we have the news, big news here that 5th March will be your meet, right? Okay, so let us be well prepared for that and give our best shot. So in this video, I'm going to discuss High yielding MCQs, especially the previous year questions in obstetrics. We all know the importance of previous year questions. So I am doing small, small 10 minutes videos of previous year MCQs so that you know whenever you are bored or whenever you want to just have a relaxation or whenever you want to revise something, you can pick up this 10 minutes videos and go through them to uh, just assimilate and accumulate the previous year MCQs in obstetrics in your brain. So this is the 2020 paper previous year questions which I have uh, choose, I, which I chose. Now let us start the questions. A female attends gynecopd with a history of frequent trichomonas vaginal is in infection. She was advised for pap smear. Patient inquires the role of pap smear in her. Helps to screen for cervical cancer. Helps to diagnose cancer in the genital tract. Helps to demonstrate trichomonas vaginalis infection. Helps to diagnose other associated genital infection in the patient. To be frank, it it can it helps in all of the following. To be frank, uh, to be true, actually, so it helps to screen for cervical cancer. Absolutely, it can diagnose cancers. Yes, you know, Pap smear not only helps you to diagnose cervical cancer, you can also pick up some other cancers like vulval, vaginal endometrial cancers also on pap smear. It helps to demonstrate trichomonas vaginalis infection. Yes, guys, trichomonas, pap smear can pick up many infections like trichomonas also. It helps to diagnose other genital. It doesn't help you to diagnose, but yes, it definitely helps you to demonstrate other genital infections in the patient. So diagnosis is a big word, but it helps to demonstrate definitely, right? Uh, now, she has frequent history of trichomonas vaginalis infection. So, as she has repeated sexually transmitted infection, she has high risk of developing cervical cancer. So, as she has repeated, I already know that she is trichomonas infection patient, right? But And she has frequent history of trichomonas infection. Now, what am I concerned in her? As she has repeated sexually transmitted infections, she is at high risk of cervical cancer. So, I advise pap smear in her to see that she doesn't have cervical cancer. She is advised, patient inquires the role of pap smear in her. So, as she has repeated sexually transmitted infection, we are doing pap smear in her to rule out cervical cancer. So, it helps to screen the cervical cancer. So, screening of cervical cancer again has been asked as an MCQ many times in a different, different modalities. Now, I will give you some brief about the how normally the pap smear result comes. So, pap smear result is mainly interpreted by Bethesda system of interpretation where we first mention the specimen type that is which is the specimen you are using whether it is the pap smear or whether it is liquid based cytology or whether it is HPV DNA testing. Specimen adequacy. Always, if you have ever observed the report of the pap smear, they'll always mention the specimen adequacy, whether the specimen is adequate or not adequate. So, if it is not inadequate, they'll mention that it is sample is inadequate, inadequate, repeat the testing. Especially with pap smear, you require repeat testing and uh, sample inadequacy is more common because 80% of the cells are lost in the process of pap smear sampling. Liquid based cytology. On the other hand, liquid-based cytology has, has good success rate and has a good sample adequacy. And, and the detection rate with pap smear 
is comparatively less compared to LBC. So LBC ka advantage, the liquid based cytology advantage is sample adequacy is good, detection rate is more, same sample can also be used for HPV DNA testing. Thiga? Then they will do the general categorization whether it is a normal or abnormal. Then if it is automated review or ancillary testing that will be mentioned. So uh, general categorization these are the options which they will give us. So negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancy. So negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancy means it is absolutely normal. Again others you have to give the interpretation. So uh, see uh, others what they can mention is endometrial cells. If there are any endometrial cells on the pap smear, they will mention that there is endometrial cells in the pap smear. So whenever you see endometrial cells in the pap smear, it is definitely not normal and you should always go for DNC. Any epithelial cell abnormality, they will also mention the epithelial cell abnormality. Next. So negative for, if it is normal, they will mention if it is negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancy. If there is infection, they will mention about the organisms. Any epithelial cell abnormalities will be mentioned, any other like other types of cells seen that also will be mentioned. So what are the different organisms which can be picked up on the pap smear? Very important guys. So the different pap organisms which can be picked up on the pap smear are trichomonas. I will show you the picture of each one of them. So how do they look on the pap smear? I will show you the images of each one of them. Okay. So trichomonas can be picked up. So fungal organisms like candida, bacterial vaginosis can be picked up. Not only that, actinomyces, see trichomonas causes trichomonas vaginitis which is a sexually transmitted disease. Candida causes candida, albic, candida, candidial vaginitis. Bacterial vaginosis is due to alteration of the microflora. Actinomyces. Actinomyces is associated with IUCD users. It is the most common infection associated with IUCD users. Okay. Next, cellular change is consistent with herpes simplex virus and cellular change is consistent with cytomegalovirus. So, these are all the infections which can be picked up on the uh, pap smear. So, what all infections we can pick up on the pap smear, guys? Trichomonas, candidiasis, bacterial vaginosis actinomyces, herpes simplex virus and cytomegalovirus. Okay? So this is the trichomonas on the pap smear. So they look like a pure shaped cells with flagellas. So they look like a pure shaped cells with flagellas. Okay? Next we have this is the candidiasis. So this is the candida. So this is called as sheik kebab appearance. So here if you observe, you have the pseudo hyphae, you have the pseudo hyphae and around the pseudo hyphae, the cervical epithelial cells are wound around. So this is called as sheik kebab appearance. Okay. Next we have clue cells. So clue cells are seen in bacterial vaginosis. So this is the bacteria attached to vaginal epithelial cells. So clue cells are seen in bacterial vaginosis where you have the bacteria attached to vaginal epithelial cells. Next, this is actinomyces. So actinomyces may you have multiple filaments arising from the, uh, you will see that around the vaginal epithelial cells like full, uh, full multiple filaments coming out. So this is called as cotton wooly appearance. Okay, so these are all the uh, pap smear images of the infections. So this what we are seeing here, this one is the trichomonas where you are seeing the pure shaped cells with flagellas, pure shaped cells with flagellas, right? This is the candida sheik kebab appearance. So this is the clue cells that is in seen in bacterial vaginosis. So this is the actinomyces, this is the actinomyces filaments uh, arising from the uh, vaginal epithelial cells. Next we also have epithelial cell abnormalities. So epithelial cell abnormalities, squamous cells, we have atypical squamous cells, 
Atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance. Atypical squamous cells cannot exclude head cell. Low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. High grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. And with feature suspicion for invasion and squamous cell carcinoma. So whenever you have any of these as H, L cell, head cell, invasion, squamous cell carcinoma on pap smear, your next step should always go for confirmation with biopsy. Confirmation with biopsy. Only for ASCUS acceptable is repeating the pap smear cytology, cytology at 6 and 12 months. 6 and 12 months. If uh, both values are still abnormal after 6 to 12 months or if it is more than ASCUS after 6 to 12 months, then she has to go for colposcopy. And preferred method, preferred method is going for HPV DNA testing. If HPV DNA testing is positive, then she has to go for directly colposcopy. If HPV DNA testing is negative, then repeat cytology after one year. Then repeat cytology after one year. Okay. So apart from ASCUS, all other squamous cell abnormalities, your next step will be confirmation with biopsy. Only for ASCUS, you can either do pap smear again at 6 and 12 months. Yeah, you can do HPV DNA testing. When you repeat the pap smear at 6 and 12 months, if it comes again abnormal or more than ASCUS after 6 to 12 months, then you have to go for colposcopic guided biopsy. When you do HPV DNA testing and if it is positive, again you will go for colposcopy guided biopsy. When you do HPV DNA testing and if it is negative, you can repeat cytology after one year. Okay. So coming to the glandular cell abnormalities, a typical Endocervical cells, not otherwise specified, endometrial cells, glandular cells, atypical endocervical cells, atypical endometrial cells, atypical glandular cells. Next, atypical endocervical cells favoring neoplasia. Atypical glandular cells favoring neoplasia. Atypical endocervical adenocarcinoma in situ. Next, adenocarcinoma, endocervical carcinoma endometrial carcinoma, extra uterine and not otherwise specified. Again, whenever you have any of these, your next step should be going for confirmation with biopsy. So any endocervical lesions usually require cone biopsy. Apart from that, other lesions will require colposcopy guided biopsy or punch biopsy. It can also mention about the other malignant neoplasms like you know atypical vulval cells yeah atypical vaginal cells so atypical vulval cells yeah atypical vaginal cells okay so this is how we interpret the interpret the uh, pap smear and this system is called as Bethesda system. So what all pap smear can tell? Pap smear if it is normal it mentions as negative for intraepithelial lesion yeah malignancy. It can also mention you about the infections that is the organisms. It can also tell us about the epithelial cell abnormalities and any other if there if present also it mentions about that right. So, uh, so these are the different organisms which can be picked up on a pap smear. Next these we have abnormalities, epithelial cell abnormalities, squamous cell abnormalities and glandular cell abnormalities. And most important point, you don't treat based on the pap smear, you always have to go for confirmatory test, which can be either colposcopic guided biopsy, a cone biopsy, but it is biopsy. So basically you have to always treat based on the biopsy. So this question I was trying to teach you about how do we interpret the pap smear, right? So this is one of the important PYQ which in recent times we had. So here the role of pap smear is to screen for the cervical cancer because she has repeated STDs. And repeated STDs is one of the risk factor for cervical cancer, right? Next, um, so how do we screen for 
how do we screen for cervical cancer? So according to American Cancer Society 2020, you are supposed to start screening from 25 years. You are supposed to screen, start screening from 25 years. So from 25 to 65 years, from 25 to 65 years, you can use HPV DNA testing every 5 years or you can use HPV DNA testing plus PAP co-testing every 5 years or you can use PAP smear ya LBC every 3 years. So preferred method will be this, acceptable will be using the pap smear ya LBC. Okay. So from 25 to 65 years we can do, this is the newer uh, 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 guideline for monitoring or the screening. Stop screening at 65 if previous three screens are negative. Stop screening at 65, previous three screens are negative. Now, in countries where there is low resource setting, according to WHO, screening should be done by visual inspection under acetic acid. So, you have to start screening from 35 to 65 years every 5 years with VIA. Every 5 years with VIA. Stop screening at 65 if previous 15 years screen is negative. That is if previous three screens are negative. Again what it mentions is at least, see if not every five years, at least screen with VIA one to three times in lifetime in low resource setting. So at least screen for screen with VIA one to three times in lifetime is the alternate apart from the, uh, but more specific is from 30 to 65 years, every 5 years with VIA and stop screening uh, if previous 15 years screen is negative, that is previous 3 screens are negative. So I think uh, in this 10 minutes, we have got a very good information about the pap smear, how do we interpret, how do we screen and how what are the infections which can be picked up and all. So see you in the next video. Thank you guys.